And welcome to St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish and our celebration of the Eucharist for the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Celebrating with us is Father Cregan, assisted by Deacon Tom. Before Mass begins, would you please join me in the prayer for the success of our capital campaign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty Father, as we gather to celebrate the sacrifice of your Son, and share the gifts of the Holy Eucharist. We are united as one Christian family. We pray that we can be your instruments on earth to imitate the faith, hope, and charity that Mother Teresa lived. As she gave sacrificially of herself, send us your spirit to guide us in stewardship that we may joyfully give of our hearts, prayers, and resources and grow in ministry for this and future generations of our parish. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. Good afternoon. You're reminded that the baskets for the Sunday collection and the capital campaign are located in the doors in the back. All parishioners are asked to receive communion in their hand. If this is not possible for you, please see Father Brandt after Mass. And those coming to communion from the side sections are asked to form one line maintaining social distancing. Thank you very much. This afternoon's liturgy is being offered for the intention of Tut Bontempo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of their spirit be with each of you. My friends, God is good. And he brings us at the close of this day to this space of inspiration and grace as we gather together, believing in the power of God to transform our lives and to transform our world. Let us ask God to forgive us for our sins and to give us strength and courage in this trying time. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Lord the Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly on us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, 
Complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to his other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, that was a pretty easy gospel to understand, wasn't it? It's obvious that the son who obeys his father's will is the one who is the good son. But what prompted the son to do his father's will after he told them he wouldn't? It was probably the curse of Catholic guilt, right? Now, many of us like to think that we live pretty good lives. In fact, I hear a lot of people say that they are very proud of the fact that they have never murdered anyone or robbed a bank. Have you ever heard the expression, setting the bar low? It means to set a standard of quality. Now, there are many people who live by the belief that if you place the bar really, really low, then it is pretty, pretty easy to be a good person. 
Now, unfortunately, many people are completely serious when they say things like that. If we are honest with ourselves, don't most of us have a certain idea where the bar is set in our lives? It's a part of human nature that causes us to think of ourselves and our conduct in the kindest and most gentle way possible. In fact, we like to set the bar low enough so that we never, ever feel guilty about most things we do in our lives. Because everyone knows that self-esteem is the most important thing a person can possess, right? No. Well, if it is the human thing to do, what is the divine or will of God in what we do? I think the answer lies in having a good sense of Catholic guilt. And by this, I do not mean it the way the world views Catholic guilt. The world calls Catholic guilt the sense of feeling guilty about almost every act or offense we commit, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Instead, I view Catholic guilt as a byproduct of an informed conscience. In other words, Catholic guilt can be a way to show us what is a fair relationship with God. Guilt is a human emotion so deeply ingrained in us that some people go to extremes regarding guilt. Now, I just gave an example as to how we try to rid ourselves of guilt by setting easily obtainable moral victories. But there are also some people who seem to feast on their own guilt or the guilt that they think they see in others around them. Guilt gluttons sometimes state that if you do not agree with their views on racism, then you are guilty of racism. If you do not subscribe to their particular ideology, then they point you out as being a person of low virtue. And we won't even get into the lawn signs that spring up proclaiming how righteous one political side is while describing the other side as composed of the spawn of Satan. Guilt can be considered and viewed in two ways. Constructive guilt versus destructive guilt. Now, constructive guilt is focused on giving one's ethical lapses, is forgiving one's ethical lapses, and changing one's behavior, while destructive guilt remains mired in self-hatred and does not emphasize learning from one's wrongdoings and moving ahead with life. A study found that Catholic participants demonstrated a higher level of constructive guilt reactions than other groups. This is not a coincidence. So guilt is not always a negative emotion. In fact, without guilt, we could not exist as a society. The reason is because the only people who never experience guilt are defined as psychopaths. Psychopaths, is that better? There we go. Psychopaths have no sense of moral right or wrong, so they never experience guilt, shame, or remorse. They replace God the Father with themselves as God. However, they have the excuse that they are mentally ill and perhaps not responsible for their actions. We do not have that excuse. In the first reading from almost 2,000 years ago, we see how many people feel about God in the modern world. In fact, the world has always and will always fight against the church because they believe that God's ways are not fair. They think, how dare God tell them how to live their lives? How dare the church call abortion and euthanasia evil? Don't Catholics know how that hurts some people's self-images? That isn't fair. Catholic theology states that God does not condemn people who fight against the church and its teachings. Instead, through us, his children, God gives them the hope that if they change their way of life and come to see and do his will, they will not die. Just ask Father Cregan about the founder of his order, St. Augustine. By delaying his judgment, God shows that he is merciful to all sinners who repent and do good. God gives them their entire lives to change. Isn't this God being fairer to the sinner than the sinner deserves? But how is this change brought about? Through guilt? Perhaps. 
In the gospel, as well as the first reading, we can get a pretty clear picture of how God views guilt. The son who initially does not go into the vineyard and then later decides to obey his father is the great example of constructive guilt. His guilt leads him to repentance. What many people see as a negative emotion becomes part of God's salvation. But only if that feeling of guilt leads to a change of heart and to a change in action. Guilt helps us to examine our conscience and our relationship with God. It helps us to acknowledge that we have sinned. This realization leads us to the sacraments that God has provided for us to cleanse ourselves from our sins and to restore our innocence. A good sense of guilt leads to humility, and that humility can restore us to a right relationship with God. We cannot ever hope to achieve peace and happiness if we refuse to acknowledge our guilt when we commit sin. If guilt helps us do this, then Catholic guilt is a blessing from God and not a curse. Good evening. Throughout this weekend, we've conducted our pre cana program here in our parish for our couples who are engaged and to be married in the near future. And the conclusion of this program takes place at our liturgy this evening as they join us for Mass and also receive this cer certificate recognizing their completion of this program. So I'd ask each of the couples that if I call, when I call your name, if you please would come forward so that uh, you can receive the certificate. Brittany, and, Brittany Convery and Kyle Miller. There you go. And you can just stand right over there, okay? Emily Regan and John Glosky. Gina Tedek and Andrew Schuller. Thank you. You can stay right here. Thank you. Monica Ryan and Kyle Gabriel. Sarah Vaith and Eric Eastwood. Thank you. Thank you. You guys can stay down there. Okay. Bridget Argo and Robert Henry. Stand over there. And Victoria Reiner and Kevin Downs. <clears throat> there you go. Stand right there. Let us pray. Lord God, the source of all love, the wise plan of your providence has brought these young people together. As they prepare themselves for the sacrament of marriage and pray for your grace, grant that strengthened by your blessing, they may grow in their respect for one another and cherish each other with a sincere love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as a sign of our support, if we can give our engaged couples a round of applause. Congratulations. And you can return to your seats. Thank you. Please rise for the profession of faith.
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called to be disciples of Jesus, let us offer our prayers this evening to the Lord in confidence. For the church, that God may unite us in our witness to his mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, May the Lord lead them in their efforts toward protecting all human life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families torn apart by addiction or divorce, that Christ, may, the mediator, may bring them healing and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish children who received the sacrament of confirmation this week, May they continue to remain close to the Holy Spirit throughout their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially Hannah Yeager. May they rejoice with the saints in God's everlasting kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. And for your own personal intentions, which we remember now in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for your steadfast love and abundant grace. Please hear and answer our prayers this night according to your holy will. We ask this through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your son and confirm in us the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all of the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, St. Teresa, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A special blessing of animals will take place on Saturday, October 3rd, in honor of St. Francis of Assisi. Details are in the bulletin on the parish website. The Knights of Columbus Pastors Cup golf outing is on Saturday, October 4th. They're, they are seeking donations for a basket of cheer. Items can be dropped off to the parish office before Wednesday, September 30th. The Education Center is looking for substitute teachers as part of a part-time honors math t- and, a, and, and a part-time honors math teacher. See the bulletin for details. We continue to clean the pews after each Mass. Anyone who is able to assist would be greatly appreciated. And a way to help identify which pews need to be cleaned, we ask you to leave your kneeler down so that they know someone was in that aisle. Thank you. Be careful as you exit. Supplies are needed for the Education Center to maintain COVID-19 protocols. Anyone interested in assisting, please see the parish website or the bulletin for details. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you this night in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.